This video was brought to you by Bedroom Planner, Ken Power, Marcus Beal, and Stolenberg. Yo, what's up? We are here at Ion Didal, regular test starting point, and behind me here you see a Volkswagen ID4 GTX. So, what is the GTX? Well, the GT stands for Grand Theft, as always, and then the X is all-wheel drive. Yeah, hmm? Do you like that shit? The Grand Theft all-wheel drive. <laughs> oh, I didn't, I done some tests yesterday already. Lo lots of bugs there. Uh, here you see GTX. Okay, important. Pirelli Scorpion. Tires, 235, 45, 21 from this is staggered and in the back we have 255 40 21 so uh, 40 and 40 uh, a 45 profile this car actually feels nice and quiet despite the, the big wheels other than that yeah the GTX has slightly different uh, uh, I don't remember what the back was but you see the GTX here full of schmutz already uh, but the GTX is not that different from from the regular one, except for that. You see, same here. Yeah, we see, <laughs> I only have a trouble out in the back, so I had to put an extension cord forward to, to get juice in the front. And see, same, but different. Uh, well, okay, actually, I can show you that. The seats are slightly different. We have the sporty seats here with more side support. Well, actually, how was the, old, the, the regular one? But see here. This is what you get in the GTX. And I think the materials in the GTX might be slightly different. Maybe actually slightly better. Not too much hard plastic. See here. Uh, but other than that, the car looks and feels about the same. But I guess I will uh, talk more about the driving dynamics in another video. Today, it's all about the range test. So we are charging up now to, well, come on. There, we're gonna charge it 100%. And you see it's noon now and we don't have too much traffic. So I will do the, the high speed test first, the 120 kilometers per hour test first, and then do the 90 test in the afternoon when we have more traffic. So actually, since I have time, I might as well charge you 100% and do the full test and try to measure now that we have hot, hot summer. Look at this, this is proper hot summer, 24 degrees Celsius. Uh, what kind of capacity we get then because I measure it before to be uh, oh, uh, about 75 kilowatt hour but it was colder back then and then since this is all-wheel drive it might also be slightly less efficient than the, the front wheel drive right I mean uh, sorry the rear wheel drive right but if you go to mode here now I have to press the mode I will be using eco mode so uh, I don't know what kind of stuff this car does to uh, make things more efficient but it's only 300 horsepower around 200 horsepower in the rear motor and that means that only about 100 something i'm guessing on the front motor so i hope this car has some kind of way to disengage the rear motor or something do they do it more efficient somehow yeah we'll see then all right we're, we're on the move and do you see what i see let me try it let me try it oh oh nice black fresh ass mm -mm -mm. fall oh yeah i just want to hug the left lane right now okay let me see how is mjorsen today we have a little bit of wind it seems like we have a slight tailwind right now or from the side yeah oh man but you see uh the id4 is quite uh it, it is fairly quiet so when you're here or you go here you hear a little difference yes but it's not like night and day like some of the noisier cars like uh what was it again the eq yeah the, the mercedes eqa i tested recently that one was really noisy a little 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 oh wait rain what okay that's not good let's go back here back, 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 back. Oh, okay it's, it's gone now gone g-o-n no we are at the first lap now and we just hit some rain so yeah just bear this in mind we have pretty nice weather today but the rain though will increase the consumption a little bit so right now we are 222 watt of a kilometer ha! nice for a big ass car like this huh ionic go home 
we are now back at Sogo Cay and uh, according to the trip here it's about 180 kilometers it's supposed to be 182 so this means that we might have 0.5 percent under reported distance uh, so for consumption it doesn't matter too much but okay but man I have to go to the restroom there is some shit I have to do over there but I will not run the air conditioning while I'm uh, yeah so yeah just um Maybe I should power it off now. Well, not there. We're gonna exit the car now. We are back at Ayonte, and you see, on this 120 kilometers per hour run, we managed to average 221 watt hour per kilometer only. Uh, this is actually lower than with Enyaq and also the other ID4. So, but those runs were done with lower temperatures, so it means that uh, most likely the reason why it was better now is because of higher temperature. But this also means that the MEB platform, even if you go for uh, all-wheel drive versus rear-wheel drive, it seems like the consumption uh, does not take a penalty. This is really good. It seems like Volkswagen did a good job of designing the MEB platform to be efficient and maybe simplified. Also, I, I just watched the Sandy Munro video when he poked into the, the motor and uh, inverter and stuff. So really impressive of MB. But okay, so now we're gonna charge up. The one, one weird thing though is that um, I only measured 72.2 kilowatt hour this time. It's supposed to be, well on paper it's supposed to be 77 kilowatt hour, but then because of some losses when you discharge it, because that's nominal uh, pack, uh, nominal capacity, then at least 75 like I measured before should be the one you get, but then I also was getting some weird numbers with the ENYAC, if I remember correctly. So since we are just here anyway, charging up, uh, I might as well charge to 100%. And then I do the full test again <laughs> with the 90 kilometers per hour test, because I want to know how many kilowatt hour we can actually get out of this when it's nice and hot outside. Remember, nice and hot summers in Norway when it's plus 25 degrees Celsius. <laughs> But now, man, I've been a little bit on a trip with wifey, so I haven't had a big Mexican in my mouth in a long time. Oh yeah, look at this, mm, some salsa and stuff. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Nice. Remember to A, B, C, always buy salsa. Mm, mm, mm. We're now on the run. This is, uh, yeah, we are now at Strandlicia. I've been driving for a while. So this time we had to cruise at 93. Yeah, on the previous test we had to cruise at 123. But look at this consumption. 154 watt hour per kilometer. Remember, this is a fairly large car. It has more space than the fat e-tron. And we're getting these kind of numbers. So, you know, the consumption on, on Ionic might be better, but Ionic can take less boxes. Huh? Ionic go home. It means that uh, when we consider banana boxes also, then I think this car beats Ionic in efficiency. Yeah. All right, so now we just have to drive a little bit, uh, but I think I have to go to Espa and uh, yeah, go to the restroom there. Maybe buy some snacks. All right, we just turned around at Dahl and I checked again that um, it was 180.2 uh, kilometers, so which means that the error here is around point. I mean, less than one percent, less than half percent. It's point three or point four percent only. So I don't think I need to correct for it. But consumption right now is 164, uh, 163. Yeah. So a projected range so far is 440 kilometers, which is lower than the VLTP. Uh, yeah. But it started uh, blowing a little bit harder now compared to earlier this morning. So uh, we still have a long way to go because we are down to, we still have 61% right now. <laughs> yeah, so that's gonna take a while. We are now at Espa. So I had to stop here to pee. I, we're just halfway. Ugh, I, I'm, I think I'm getting old, man. I, I had to pee as often as a pregnant woman. But you know, I, you, I've heard that it's not good for the prostate to hold it too long. So this range test, it's gonna ruin my body eventually. Ugh. But I guess this is not 1000 kilometer challenge. So we have plenty of time to stop and pee and whatever. Uh, and I guess admire the car, yes. And the bugs. Mm. Okay, let's keep driving. Because I don't wanna stay here too long because it will be, the car will be heating up and then once you start driving, it will then 
spend extra energy cooling down everything again. Uh oh, um, we have a detour here, which is kind of slow detour, which will actually mess up my 90 kilometers per hour timing. So uh, I've seen this before because I was here yesterday when I did the launch test. So what we will do now actually is to turn back and drive a little bit back and forth. And then we will have to pass through here at the final lap. Or actually, you know what? We could also end up at Espa if we want to avoid this detour. Hmm. I'll figure out something. All right, so this is the deal. Uh, we're going to go back to Espa instead to avoid that uh, road construction site. So you see, we are now 50, what, huh? 50. No, what the heck? The car at the charging stop. Yeah, okay. Uh, I need to disable that feature. But uh, anyway, so we're getting close to Espa. And right now the car claims 43 kilometers. Don't trust it. Because I've seen it over and over again that ID3, ID4, uh, it will give you a somewhat optimistic estimation. Uh, so you have to actually, like, we're not getting 42 kilometers here. We're getting around 30 kilometers out of this. Yeah, something like that. So as long as you're aware of it, you won't get any crazy uh, surprises towards the end. <laughs> okay, we're charging now at Espa. And um, see, we managed to drive about 440 kilometers. And that means we're 3% left. Uh, so it means that if we drive down to zero, it will be able to drive 456 kilometers. Not too bad. Um, and then based on all this, it seems like we have only 72.9 kilowatt hour. So I still wonder where those two kilowatt hour went. <laughs> because I did measure 75, well, almost 75 kilowatt hour earlier. Uh, but maybe that was a different software version, whatever. I always measure the same thing, drive with the same route, the exact same thing. So I don't know what happened there. But the consumption was only 160 watt hour per kilometer. That's the, that's the whole purpose of the test, is to verify it. And you see that uh, the consumption numbers here is actually slightly lower than the previous ones. Uh, but it was also warmer today. But this indicates that the all-wheel drive system in the EMB platform doesn't seem to make the cars thirstier because that's what I've seen in other cars that uh, when you have those all-wheel drives they they are thirsty for some reason but I heard some people claim that the front motor here is a, is a induction motor and the rear is the permanent motor, permanent magnet so the rear motor will mostly be on all the time and then if you don't need that much power or if you don't need the traction then the front motor is just sleeping without any resistance so it's just okay it becomes dead weight and i was already checked the weight that was in the previous video that it was 100 kilos extra in the front um so this is pretty good because uh, people who have ordered the gtx uh, should you go for it or should you cancel it and get the rear wheel drive? Well, um, it depends because I felt like the rear wheel drive was a little bit slow. 0 to 100 in 8 seconds or something, that's kind of slow. But 0 to 100 in around 6 seconds, that is way better. It's not blistering fast. It's not like Tesla because they are down to around 4 seconds. But it's still pretty fast, yes. Uh, and then, but also, you know, when I drive around curves or roundabouts and when I exit or just... Uh, the car limits the power on the rear wheel drive because uh, otherwise you would just spin the wheels. So with the, with the GTX, uh, the car feels more nimble even though we have 100 kilos more. Uh, and then since you don't take any penalty on the range or the, the efficiency, then I guess it just boils down to whether you can afford it or not. Yeah. But anyway, interesting. Yes, but I will not test the uh, Enyaq's version because it's basically the, the same drivetrain, the same battery, the same motor, the same gearbox. So there's no need for me to test it. I can just say that if you go for the ADX Enyaq, it's going to be more or less the same also. Similar consumption all that. So yeah, I think that's going to be it for now. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, thank you for watching and talk to you later.